Reading from the magazine section of the Sunday Star newspaper in Washington, D.C. on November 14, 1926. A little group of wide-eyed visitors from the Middle West, bent upon seeing Washington, stopped before the castellated brownstone front of the Smithsonian Institution the other day, quickly absorbed the wooded expanse of the mall that swept down toward the glistening dome of the Capitol, and then turned within what they and most other American citizens, perchance, confidently believed to be, open quotes, another government department, close quotes. What was their surprise, therefore, when the very first object they beheld within the portals of that very learned institution was a quiet sanctuary, lovely and peaceful in the soft light that filtered through soft blue and gold windows and fell with striking gentleness upon the outlines of a grey stone mausoleum. Within that hewn casket reposed the ashes of the man whose will founded the Smithsonian Institution. James Smithson, an Englishman. Though he never saw this country, James Smithson, scientist, author, and international benefactor, had such confidence in our then young republic that he made it the trustee of his entire fortune, to be used for the increase and diffusion of knowledge among men. Thus, the Smithsonian Institution is not of national origin, as is so frequently supposed, but was the establishment of an individual. It is privately endowed and privately financed. The government of the United States is merely the trustee to carry out the design of the testator. And as to its achievements... Whatever its accomplishments must result from its adherence to the basic principle deduced from the will of its founder by its first secretary, Joseph Henry. The vision of the founder was so broad, however, that the Smithsonian's record of achievements includes fields as widely diversified as aviation, astrophysics, and the animals of the deep sea. Without a doubt, as we've seen, there was confusion already surrounding the Smithsonian Institution back in 1926. But the article clearly said that it was a privately endowed and privately financed institution. Another article also came from the same newspaper in 1925, a little earlier, but speaking about how the Smithsonian, like every other private charity wanted to extend its purpose but needed funding for such an endeavor and for that reason appeal to the public for millions based upon their desire to expand their activities and not having sufficient funds from the original Smithson bequest. To better understand the private nature of the private Smithsonian charity we can compare it to Girard College in Philadelphia, established at the same time as the Smithsonian Institution, but administered by a board appointed by the government of the state of Pennsylvania. The Smithsonian Institution is administered by the Board of Regents, appointed by Congress, the federal government. Both private trusts administered by government-appointed boards. The ongoing confusion, though, surrounding the Smithsonian Institution has contributed to scandals that have erupted throughout the decades. This news article, Something Smells at Smithsonian, by well-known Pulitzer Prize winner and investigative journalist Clark Molinoff, 
reveals the crisis of leadership that the Smithsonian Institution has experienced over the decades because the Board of Regents, composed of different members of the federal government, have not been able to properly administer their duties, allowing the secretaries at those times to run amok. Those taxpayer-funded scandals eventually prompted in 2007 investigations by Senator Chuck Grassley, who confronted the Board of Regents and especially Chancellor John Roberts about the very poorly administered Smithsonian Institution. Senator Chuck Grassley's condemnation of the way in which the Smithsonian Board of Regents and the Smithsonian Institution in 2007 was being run is an eye-opener, prompting the nearly 400-page IRC investigation by non-profit experts who concluded that the Smithsonian Institution and the Board of Regents were derelict in their duties, and this had caused the Smithsonian Secretary to get away with things that they were shocked by. But the behavior at the Smithsonian Institution is not shocking. This culture is documented in these investigations, going back to 1977, when similar findings about the Board of Regents' dereliction of duty and the scandalous behavior of the Secretary, and nobody until now has been able to hold them to account, especially since they are appropriating hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars. My federal lawsuit from 2017 began to uncover the scandals and the problems associated with the confusion as to the entity status or legal composition of the Smithsonian Institution. This confusion even affected the federal courts. This confusion at the federal court level was not a surprise either. A speech prepared for Chief Justice Warren Berger, who was also Chancellor of the Smithsonian, spoke about the confusion in the courts about the legal composition of the Smithsonian Institution. But the speech was clear. The Smithsonian Institution is not and has never been considered a government bureau. It is a private institution under the guardianship of the government. This was the quoted opinion of William Howard Taft, former president former Chief Justice, and former Smithsonian Chancellor. He had clearly defined the institution as a private institution under the guardianship of the government. But that didn't stop the Department of Justice arguing against me in my lawsuit against the Smithsonian Institution that the Smithsonian Institution was not private but belonged to the government, was the government through and through and that in order to deprive me of my First Amendment free speech rights, they had to claim that the Smithsonian Institution spoke for the federal government, not for James Smithson, exercised First Amendment speech rights as the government speaking, and in that way deprived me of my First Amendment speech rights. And remarkably, the courts agreed. The federal court, under Judge Trevor McFadden, issued this ruling that the Smithsonian Institution is a government institution through and through, denying everything that we've just seen and creating a new law and new definition of the Smithsonian Institution. This corrupt ruling at the District Court for the District of Columbia contradicted two Supreme Court rulings that both said that government-run organizations, even if they are private, like Amtrak or the Girard Trust, owe constitutional protections to the citizens of the United States. But in my case, they had to deny me my constitutional rights, and the only way to do that was to distort the legal composition of the Smithsonian Institution. And why this is so egregious is because, in effect, the government had to steal the property of James Smithson. The Smithsonian Institution is called the Smithsonian Institution because it fulfills the will of a private citizen. And if the federal government can steal the property of a deceased person, then the United States and the Constitution of the United States means absolutely nothing.